Here's a proof of concept of the laser rangefinder using triangulation with a camera. Um, the setup I have right now is a microprocessor. It's a Freescale QG8 part that's doing the processing. Um, for the real unit, maybe we could use a propeller uh, and keep the, uh, the code open source. It would be a lot more hackable that way. Um, I have a serial interface for the debug terminal and then a serial interface that connects up to the CMU cam, which is a camera module um, used for a lot of robotics, but I'm using it for this project just right now because it's uh, just an easy module. It takes care of all the low-level processing of the camera module, which is an Omnivision uh, module. So what we'd end up doing if we like this design is taking just the module, getting them from Omnivision, and then dealing with the low-level interfacing ourselves. Uh, and doing just the functionality that we need, which is the color tracking, bypassing all this extra expensive circuitry. But for the proof of concept, it works fine. Over here, I have a uh, standard laser pointer, 5 milliwatt laser pointer. Right now, it's manually controlled, so when I hit the button, the laser comes on. That's just for testing. Um, obviously, for the real uh, version of this thing, we'd have the laser controlled by the circuitry, by the enable line to turn on the laser range finding functionality. Um, so, when we plug in the, uh, the device, we get some information on the terminal screen, a header, and then initializing the camera. So what's going on is the camera basically takes uh, a snapshot of the ambient environment of the current lighting conditions uh, and then adjusts the white balance and adjusts the, uh, the contrast and brightness to make it easier to detect uh, red bright spots in an environment. So one downside to using a camera is if there is harsh lighting um, or other bright spots in the room, say from, from spotlights or something, um, that are in the camera's field of view, it might make it difficult to determine what the red light is. But in, in regular lighting environments, it works great, indoor environments, uh, especially at night. So once the initialization happens, we're now in the tracking mode. So the camera is waiting to detect a red spot within its field of view. Uh, and let's see, for an example, I'll just turn it towards the oscilloscope and hit the button. So it's shining on the screen right now from about there. And then if we look over to the screen, we see a bunch of debug information that I'm using. The left X and Y is the actual uh, coordinates of the centroid, the brightest part of the red spot within uh, the camera field of view. Um, PFC is the uh, number of pixels from the center of the camera. So we're basically using um, half of the camera's field of view in the horizontal axis to detect from the center point to the edge of the field of view. Um, and then use some trigonometry to, to calculate the distance, which is here. So we're about 15 and 3 quarter inches um, away from the oscilloscope. So um, yeah, the camera we're using right now, the CMU cam has a resolution of 176 bits across. And we're using half of that, uh, again, to, uh, to detect from the center point to the edge of the screen. So in the real unit, I'll end up with a 640 by 480 or maybe a 1024 by 768 camera module, um, whatever is available and low cost. Um, and then we can use that, and we'll get a lot better resolution. Right now, with the current setup, even with this low resolution, we can get about uh, maybe a quarter inch accuracy and we can measure from about seven inches which is about here uh, which corresponds to the the edge of the field of view of the camera um, to about 40 inches um, we can actually measure further than that but the accuracy because the resolution is so low um, isn't very good so when we go higher resolution on the camera we'll be able to get a better distance but even now it works really well I'm pretty impressed um, so I have a box I'll put up and I'll move it little by little and we can take some measurements. So if I shine the laser on the screen here, we see about 16 and a half uh, inches. I'll move it a little closer. Do it again. I'll show you the screen at the end. Now we're about nine. And then maybe this is eight. So then we look on the screen.